Hello my ninjas and ninjats, it's people and other ninja and we are looking at some smite beta, we are looking at replay footage from the 10k PAX East tournament guys, and we are watching, this is round 2 currently, match 2 in round 2, and each round is just played as a best of 3, so first person to get 2 wins, um, goes and secures, you can see Pom Pom here, just looking out, just trying to get some gauge, maybe she's just trying to to get good vision on here. Pompon just comes out so fast. That's amazing. But guys, let us introduce both teams in case you haven't heard of them. Curse Gaming has Pompon as Freya and Zatman as on here. Sparks as Ymir, the best in mid as Al Kwong and Shadow Q as Sobek. He does love to play a mean Sobek. He rarely misses his charge praise. Makes him very strong and very reliable. And here on Copenhagen Wolf, as we zoom in on Thor, is Spoo on Thor, Baja as Ares, Youngbei as Hercules, Hirok as Guan Yu, and Spray Yarn in mid lane as Hell. So it's going to be uh, mid versus mid, Hell versus, um, who is it, the best here. So let us see, very interested to see how this is working out. It looks like we're just going very standard. Thor just getting vision on that um, attack buff a little bit. And same with Freya Pon Pon looking at that ward there. So far, nothing going crazy so far, just doing their own buffs. You can see Ymir doing their gold down here with and her. Just trying to get some EXP, just trying to get some farm before the game even starts. And guys, I am very interested to see how this match turns out. <laughs> You can see them just getting that gold right there. No invades. Everything's going pretty textbook so far. And definitely getting the red buff there. There we go. Frey is starting off with the red buff. A very good choice. And it looks like rather than doing the cooldown, Ares her is just going straight to lane. I'm pretty sure Frey is going to get this blue buff. And yes, they are going to get that blue buff. Frey doing just so much AoE damage with her pulse. And Sobek tanking it like a crocodile with armor plating. Which is exactly what he is. And it looks like everyone's going out to the laning phase for now. So everything seems to be in order. Let us see how Freya is able to push out in left lane a bit here. And she does have red and blue, which makes her have a lot of damage early on. And note that the Fre uh, that the red buff does give you magic damage and physical damage. And Freya able to utilize both magic and physical damage before the game. Just able to harass a bit there. And again, just doing a little bit of damage to the Hercules. The Hercules does have one of the highest HPs in game. In fact, Hercules has the third most HP behind Ymir and Hades. And then after that, it is Hercules with the HP. So it is pretty impressive about how much HP he gets, especially early on. It makes him very strong. No other physical melee character really has that much HP. And let's see, right lane, are they getting engaged? No, they're just pushing and just landing phase nothing very interesting let's go on with this mid and so we don't see any risky builds no doom orbs coming out some people like to play Al Kwong mid doom orb or if they choose Loki they go Loki Heartseeker um, in mid and it really oh the Al Kwong taking a lot of punishment just to kill that minion wave and it looks like Hell is winning this exchange Hell does have that early heals um, so she can just keep sustaining the lane and is this Sobek looking for a pull here? I think he is looking for a pull. He does pull the Ares. Let's see exactly how much damage that Freya can do. Freya doing just so much damage. And his first blood comes out on that Ares. And goodbye. And Freya might be able to pick up a second kill here. And just so close. And, and Age is coming out. And oh, Sobek misses the pull there. And especially after I said Shadow Q never misses a pull. Never misses a charge prey. There he goes and does it. And let's see in right lane. So right now, Chris gaming up with one kill and about just under a 1k lead, about 800 gold. And if Chris is able to secure more kills, then we can see this gold lead expand and expand. So it looks like Copenhagen's right tower is under attack. The Hercules really needs to go back. He's in a very dangerous position. Freya can just ulti and kill that Hercules if she so desires. And Hercules actually uses Aegis already, so... Um, it looks like Frey did use her ultimate there, even after hitting level 5, so I guess we missed it. And Hercules is able to ba barely survive that. And Sopa can actually get a pull on this Hercules if he so desires. And nope, he's going to back out. They're just going to go with the more passive play. And Ares looking to maybe chain there. Right lane is pushed all the way on here, Ymir. Very strong lane, especially against Guan Yu Thor, so there's not too much they can do here. 
Every time Thor wants to initiate out, he is probably going to get frozen frost breath by Ymir. And if you've ever been frozen in ice, it's probably not a very good feeling. Ao Kuang, oh, getting very low in his tower. But again, those minions just doing a lot of damage. Oh, hell, walking into tornadoes, and that's going to hurt her a lot. But look at her sustain. Just her healing herself for a quarter of her HP. And it looks like Ao Kuang does have to back here, knowing he's very, very low. Right lane, both backs. And so nothing too exciting happening I bet this Freya Sobic lane is going to be very, very, very useful. And look at this Freya just getting some extra gold from the right side. Um, usually people in the left side tend to stay with the left gold buffs and so on. But in this case, it looks like Freya just goes for it as soon as it's up. And that's smart play. Just taking the jungle buffs as soon as you can really gives you a slight EXP advantage. And look at Freya just going for that attack buff. Just got these timers in her, in her head just down. And therefore, it's just so good of her um, time management. She's knowing that after she gets this red buff, guess what she's gonna get? She's gonna get this blue buff. And her getting, finally getting this cooldown buff. But you need this timing. Sobek's probably gonna rotate over after clearing out some of those minions. No, he's just holding lane for her and giving Freya the extra DPS. As you really want your DPS to be super level. And if you give your DPS a higher levels they do of course more damage and tanks what their job mainly is is to just kind of CC and kind of control and pull and push but other than that they're not really designed there to do massive amounts of damage that's why uh, Freya is solo taking these buffs and just getting in oh the Ares could get pulled here and oh Saddle Q missing another pull that Hercules taking a lot of damage from that Freya and Driving Strike coming down from the Hercules. The ultimate coming down from Sobek. Can he get him? And Hercules is slowed. He does have to pop an Aegis. An ultimate coming down from... There is a huge boulder coming out. But Freya ultimates in time to get away from most of that damage. And I don't think Ares has anything left. And that chain by Ares. Just a perfect, perfect, perfect pull. But again, Freya had her ultimate. And during her ultimate, she is immune not to damage, but immune to CC. So the damage still went on her, but at the same time, she's able to get away. No problem. How's mid lane doing here? Ao Kuang versus Hell. Now Ao Kuang has some magic damage, and so he should be able to push this no problem. And he can kill the entire crew of And it looks like Ares getting pulled here. He doesn't really have any CC. Freya can focus him down real easily, and there he goes. Freya just doing so much damage. And so now Freya is starting to get fed 3-0, 4,000 gold in level 8 compared to level 6's on Copenhagen Wolf. So it is going to be a domination right now. And Co Copenhagen doesn't really have too much to do against the Sobek Freya combination. And they're just going to have to play passive in that tower. Look, her being level 9, Hercules still only level 7, it's a huge disparity in levels. There's a Thor camping out in lane and it looks like he's going to initiate on that Freya in the tower. And they can definitely get this kill if they don't make any mistakes. Yes, they get this Freya kill. Freya overextending quite a bit. And unaware that that Thor was missing. Probably a missed call in right lane. Looks like Sobek is by himself. He's going to get chained here. Um, and Hercules can do quite a bit of damage. But let's see how this turns out. And Sobek looking to bait them into the tower. He does push Hercules into the tower there. But no one's going to go down. Ymir is shifting over, maybe looking for a kill or a gank. And you can see that right now the wards aren't even out. It's either that or the wards are broken. And generally you see a few wards coming out. And Hercules getting hit by that Shards of Ice by Ymir. Getting just so much damage on him. And a boulder coming out, doing a little bit of chunk damage to Ymir. But again, not enough to really anything on oh this Hercules does not have an Aegis but I do believe he has a driving strike Hercules taking some extra damage against this Ymir he might actually be able to kill this Ymir but no Freya comes in from the jungle saves the Ymir kills the Hercules and again goes 4-1 Pon Pon with all the kills on Curse Gaming and so now this is really gonna get her fed look level 10 out leveling the mid lane even with that kill <laughs> And generally, the mid lane is very strong. Mid lane generally has the highest gold farm and um, the highest levels just because they get to single farm. And it looks like Hell is rotating left. That was an amazing play by Pon Pon. And it looks like if Copenhagen Wolves had a few more 
wards here, they would have realized to back out instead of try to go for that Emir. That was just a little bit too ham for them. Are they going to go for any early objectives? No, Freya on a timer. Look at this. She goes for the red buff right as it spawns. Amazing play. Thor looking to maybe chase this down. It looks like Freya is just going to switch targets here. Thor looking to steal, and it looks like he's not going to be able to. And Thor is actually in a bit of trouble here. And he has to use his ultimate to get out of there. No problem. Sobek looking to maybe engage here. But no, Sobek is going to back out smartly. And they were almost able to pick off Thor. Look how low he is. And it looks like they're going to start a Gold Fury knowing that Thor is out of the fight. One, you still in right lane. So now they only have two or three here. And it looks like Curse takes down a real quick Gold Fury. That was so quick. Let's time this, baby. And I believe it was about 10 or 10 or 12 seconds that they do. So first hit starts off at, at 9.07 at the top. And let's see how quick that, that this goes. And it might be an end here with a lot of damage. A 10 second Gold Fury. And there's no way that you can contest, especially if Thor's out of the fight and Guan Yu in right lane. That was a great pickup by Curse Gaming, knowing that all five of them were there. A few ulties were blown. Um, I in here did use his ulti Desert Fury to do some extra damage, but guys, it, it is fantastic. It is fine. And right now, Curse off to a commanding lead. The general rule that I follow with my games is if they have 10 percent lead or greater than 10 percent lead that's when it starts to snowball really hard and you can see that they have a 15 percent lead a 3k lead here and 15 percent game is almost over if you have a 20 percent lead then unless the enemy team does stupid things like go one on five you're not going to be able to come back from that and curse knowing them and copenhagen neither of them would do really stupid things like engage one versus five so as long as Curse maintains a high level play, they will definitely have this in the bag from such an early point. And look at this, levels 11, 12, 11, 10, 9. And here it's mostly 10s, 9s, and even an 8 on Copenhagen sides. Ares with the pull, but Ares taking so much damage from that Freya. And Freya in the tower, she's probably going to kill the Ares. Sobek actually kills the Ares, and Freya's going to get out with her ultimate. And Thor looking to do some damage here. And Sobek with the pole just zoning out. Hercules chasing hard and says, hey, I really want to kill that Freya. Oh, the hell gets banished. And it looks like Thor is going to try to go and dive this. Sobek does die. Alquine's ulti comes out and hits nobody. Hercules in a bit of trouble here. And a wonderful heal coming off by hell. Again, Hercules has no mana to escape. No mana to use Driving Strike to push that back. And it looks like... Copenhagen able to pick up one kill there without really losing anybody. They almost lost to Hercules in left lane, but fortunately for them, he was able to get out with some wonderful heals by that help. And so the gold lead is still about 3k, um, just a slightly favoring um, Curse Gaming with 3.2k, I believe. And so let's see what in happens here. Freya just like a level 11, capable of doing so much damage. That Thor is also level 11. But again, Freya with her skills, if she uses her pulse and irradiate in conjunction with each other, she's capable of doing just so much damage. And now we have an Alquang mid lane. And oh, on here getting very, very low. Where did he go? Oh, let us just rewind that a little bit. And so it looks like on here soloing a Guan Yu with half health. So if he decides to get ganked here, then it could mean very bad things. It's like Guan Yu engaging here. The ulti coming out from on her. And Guan Yu with a girdle just doing so much damage. And Tactician's Advantage coming out. The Aegis coming out. Can Ymir stop this? Ain here still staying in battle. And he gets charged by that Guan Yu, unfortunately. And there goes Ain here. So Corbin Caving trying to level up the playing field. Again, they did get that early gold fury, so they're going to have at least a 2k gold lead until Copenhagen steals another gold fury. And oh, it looks like Ares in a little bit of trouble here. No, he's just living in the tower. He says, guys, this tower is my home. When this tower goes down, giving, again, Curse Gaming extra gold and EXP. So I don't think Thor and Ares can do anything against Sobek. Sobek now level 12. Freya now level 12. And they are actually engaging on the Sobek. 
Let's see here. And Freya just looking to steal some of their buffs if possible. Gold Fury should be up very, very shortly. And it looks like Freya is actually going for a gank in mid lane. It looks like there was a missing call from left lane. And oh, it looks like the hell does get tossed back by that Shadow Q. And Pon Pon. Oh, it looks like Zatman actually gets the kill there with Mound here. And as long as either Zatman or Pon Pon gets fed then Chris Gaming is going to be in very good shape. It looks like a very bad missing call here. And so now, definitely Chris has regained its lead. It's about 4k now, 4.5k. And they're doing this red buff and Thor unable to contest. And Copenhagen doing everything that they can just to hold on. This Ymir, this Ymir versus Guan Yu here. And Ymir just warded and he says, hey buddy. And Guan Yu knows that Ymir just warded there. And Ymir's like, drat, there goes my 75 gold. I want a refund. And unfortunately, the store does not give you refunds. I don't know any store in the world that does not give you refunds except this Smite store. This is the worst Smite store in the world. They steal your money, and if you want to sell it back, they say, hey, you got five seconds to try it. And if you don't like it for five seconds, then we're going to take one-third of your gold and that's my story so greedy it must be run by goblins from the underworld we're just chasing this end here here it looks like there's gonna be another fight in mid lane very very soon it looks like Ymir and in here just clearing out these buffs here and again they are very good with their timing they just keep taking the buffs as soon as they can and it looks like Frey here in left lane just taking this blue buff as well so look as soon as these camps come up in here would we'll probably take this gold camp as soon as he comes back and Ao Kong alone in mid lane and this allows Frey to just push up left a little bit curse gaming getting pushed quite a quite a bit on both sides so they're just pushing back the lanes maybe setting up for a objective right here and Ymir just holding right for now and Ymir doing no damage whatsoever so he's just trying his best to push this lane. Oh, there's Converge coming in on this hell. And she anticipates the pull, so she does a cleanse early on, and that's going to cost her her life. And Sprayarn just gets pulled, killed, charged, and slaughtered. And so now, uh, Curse again has 5 versus 4. They might try to push for mid tower, maybe get another kill here. And Hercules is out a little bit. One you with Tactician's Bandage coming out. And it looks like he won't be able to do much there. Um, in fact, most people did not get hit. And all the Puri Bees coming out. A lot of Aegis is coming out. Thor up in the air. I, I would be very surprised to see Thor engage on this. And yes, Thor does have to waste his ulti and get away to safety. Under getting a really nice stun with that pillar. And oh, a wonderful charge prey by that Sobek. So it now looks like Curse Gaming does have a 5 versus 3 advantage. Hell now just coming back up for Copenhagen. A wonderful ultimate from Al Quang hitting that Thor. Now it looks like Copenhagen will have to lose his tower or lose more people. Guan Yu getting pulled, charged, prayed by that Sobek. And again, Ymir using a Shards of Ice, but they did not need it there. So mid tower is going to be taken and a free gold fury for Curse Gaming as well. That Sobek just in command, just being able to just pull and push and dictate the rhythm of the battle. And unfortunately, since Sobek is tanky, it is going to be very hard for anybody to kill. Look at this, he has Hyda the Nemean line and starting that Mage Ice Blessing, giving him look magical and physical protection. And an uncontested gold fury by Curse Gaming, and look at this gold lead now. It's almost 10k, it's about 9k right here, 8.8k to be exact. And this level lead is starting to surmount to something insurmountable, guys. And you can see Curse Gaming just smartly backing off in all lanes, just refreshing all their HP, maybe setting up for a Fire Giant. And everyone back up on the battlefield. Be very surprised to see Copenhagen may be able to steal a Fire Giant and hopefully have them stay in the game. But right now, Curse Gaming is starting to snowball very hard. Look at this. It is definitely over a 20% gold lead. And at this point, it is almost impossible to come back. 
it looks like Freya caught off by herself. She gets a wonderful banish off. She might actually be looking to engage this against Hercules. And she knows that she can do the damage. Thor coming down, doing a little bit of damage to Freya. Freya uses her ultimate Valkyrie's discretion to get away. And Hercules taking a lot of damage from the end here. Get hit with all those spears. The big baseball excavate from Hercules coming down, killing that Freya. And the Thor trying to escape from his life. But guys, there's an Alpine behind doing tornado damage. And oh my god, look at how much tornado damage. Thor does have to use his Aegis, he gets trapped by Ymir and Onkar, and that is a bad day. Guan Yu now surrounded by 4 people, and that is not going to be a good day for Guan Yu. He might be able to escape with his ultimate, but he gets charged prey again, and Hell coming in to help. Guan Yu looking to maybe kill this Onkar, Onkar is using his Aegis here. And the ultimate coming down from Alkong, Spirit's Tempest doing so much damage, and this Hell getting focused down as well. And there's no way that she can escape. Not in a million years, not even if they all deceive, well maybe if they all deceive, but that was not, surely not going to happen at that point. So guys, a 3 for 1 exchange, Copenhagen loses 3, Curse Gaming gets 1. Or Copen, yeah, and Curse Gaming loses 1, not gets 1, rather, they get 3. So right now, look, a 10k gold advantage, substantial, it's over 30% lead, and so right now it's going to be pretty insurmountable. And the odds are definitely stacked against Copenhagen right now. This looks like to be a pretty quick finish if Curse can secure a Fire Giant. And I think right now, after they get their buffs, they will certainly do so. And let's just take a quick look at all these item builds and all these levels. 15, 14, 14, 13, 13. And you can see the highest level here on Curse Gaming is 17 versus the lowest level as of 14. And most of the damage is 16 and 15, and here the damage is 14 and 15. So it is a quite um, an uphill battle for Copenhagen. And let's look at these item builds. So Al Quang going with something a little bit more tanky with the Warlock Sash. Uh, Freya just doing a lot of damage with her Boots of the Magi. Demonic Grip almost finished. And Fatalis giving her that extra movement speed for Chase and escapability on here. Standard build with any AD range and he's going Warrior Tabi's um, Executioner and it looks like Curse is doing the Fire Giant here. And Executioner and Titan Spain just capable of just doing so much almost true damage and Sobek with a very tanky build. One you initiating on this but again he gets taken out so quickly with all that penetration. One you even does not have any physical defense items. And actually let's slow this down here. And so it looks like Ares behind, they are chasing that hell, and that Freya is just doing so much damage. And they are going to turn around on this Ares. Ares does not really have any escape moves. He's caught out 3 versus 1, and it's going to be a goodbye Ares to you. Ymir throwing his Frost Best, but totally not needed to secure that kill. And it looks like this Fire Giant did reset, so Cursed Gaming kind of baited it. They started, got it very low, and then... As soon as the enemy started pouring, they just stopped the fire giant, turned around, and killed them. And a wonderful Spirits Tempest coming in again, baiting this again very solidly. Zant Man killing Hercules and Young Bay on Copenhagen. And now they are seriously underhand. It is now only two players up on Copenhagen Wolves. Surrender vote has been called. And it looks like Curse Gaming will certainly get this fire giant now if they were not. Well, even though they were guaranteed it pretty much before. Um, what they did by turning around and killing those guys were preventing a steal. Uh, steals are really, really um, infamous in this game. So it's, it's very hard to get a steal, but it's definitely possible. So what Curse did by turning around, stopping the Fire Giant, making it reset, was to secure the Fire Giant, make sure that no possibility for any type of steal, um, even with Hog, even with an ultimate anything, um, there was just no chance for Copenhagen to get it. And that probate, guys, that probate from Curse Gaming knew exactly when they were coming in. And look at this war control. They knew exactly where all their players were. So very, very tough to really overcome. And look at that. That tower goes down in less than two seconds. And that poor tower has feelings, has emotions. But it's not going to be lasting much longer. Oh my god, that tower is going down. Please someone call home improvement because they need repairs on Copenhagen side. And so now all five members up, but Curse Gaming definitely advantage in terms of items and in terms of gold and in terms of levels and everything. 
go in Curse's way. This Phoenix is going to go down very quickly. Ares trying to use ultimate, but he's just going to get focused down very quickly. And Ares dying. Thor barely escapes here. Thor goes up in the air just to maybe avoid any wall shots. Spirit's Tempest through the wall. And here jumping out on that Thor. Perfect timing. And a stun against that wall. This Thor needs to get away. He uses Puri Beats. One more shot by Anya. Looks like he's going to get away. Ymir's getting very low. But he's hiding behind a lion, a uh, crocodile, a Freya, and oh, Freya doing so much damage. Alquan also doing a lot of damage against that Hercules. Hell coming in, trying to focus down on Alquan. There's going to be nothing she can do. And she might be able to pick up this end here, but no, this is a lot of damage going on down on her. And she gets impaled by that on her and trip a double kill for the best here. And it looks like Copenhagen is down for. And it's going to be a free Minotaur. Let's speed this up. Poor Bobby the Minotaur. He's having a rough day. He's been killed quite a few times today. And they say, Bobby, we don't have any substitutes. You got to just keep playing. And Bobby's like, okay, well, I get overtime for this. But Bobby does not want to keep doing overtime because he is in trouble here. And Freya targeting Sobek, drawing that out. And Zapman scoring the deicide there. Thor trying to do a little bit of harass, but unable to do anything. And this... Bobby the Mentor is going to have a very bad day. Freya just tanking this. She doesn't care. And Freya's actually going to go down. Pompon dies due to the Mentor, but it's okay. The rest of the team can mop that up, no problem. And poor Bobby. He is not going to survive this, and he's going to have to go to the hospital, go to the treatment, and he's going to sue his company and maybe get a nice hefty check for all that harassment and all that negligence. He doesn't even get a helmet, guys. How can you give a Minotaur that has to fight five guys no helmet? It is a travesty. And let us see the stats. And again, my favorite stat is player damage. Again, Pon Pon on Freya just doing so much damage. And 16k here. And Zapman, the second right lane 80 carry, does 40, 14k, not 40k times, 14k. And Alquang in mid doing 10k. Very solid gameplays. Let's see here. Hell doing the most damage. Thor doing the second most, oh actually no, Guan Yu doing the most damage, the tank, but he didn't really build too tanky as we'll see here, and Youngbei getting shut out as Hercules, Hercules definitely capable of doing a lot of damage, but that early death in left lane really cost them the, the match and the inability to push as Hercules, and so let's see these build, builds here. Shadow Q with these boots of celerity early on, giving him extra cooldown reduction for that charge prey, and he goes with a Magi's Blessing and Hide of the Me and Lion. Very, very strong defensive items against both physical and magical, shutting down anybody who does not have any penetration. You can see here on Copenhagen Wolves that no one really had that penetration early on. Um, the best case scenario is Thor who had a Void Blade, but again, 55 physical protection and this only reduces the physical protection of enemies by 25. So very, very, very unbalanced. Um, definitely giving favor to the Sobek who also has a Vanguard. And you see barely anyone finishing two items that mystical mark coming out early on that area skipping these boots completely um but he still does get, get that base 21 percent speed and then this gem of iso finishing on the guan yu but unable to really secure any kills and warrior tabi's coming out on hercules and unable to finish that void blade again so under farmed late and early into the game and like this 11k gold freya able to finish three oh uh, Ao Kuang, rather, able to finish three items. Freya going with a double starter build. She could have finished this Demonic Grip, um, but she decided to stay out in battle as she had that Fatalis, and she didn't really need to go back to really rebuy this. So three items almost completed for most of um, most of Chris Gaming here. And you can see on here, definitely with double penetration, not going with Lifesteal, just looking to do that early damage and have his skills do full damage and his ultimate. On here's ultimate just so strong. If you hit with all eight spears at level five, then you do um, 600 damage, true damage. And with an Executioner, Warrior Tabi, and Titan Spain, you're going to be doing very, very close to true damage anyways. So a lot, a lot of punishment. And you can see Freya 8-3 and her... 8-2. Very solid gameplay by both teams. I'm looking forward to see how Copenhagen Wolves can recover in the loser's bracket. And I'm also looking forward to see how Curse Gaming does in the future matches. Um, GG to both teams. And again, if you guys like this commentary, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And as always, peace, love, and ninja. Peeva, another ninja signing out. Bye-bye, guys.